It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue focused late night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission really is to empower, and our mission is to inspire, and our mission is to provide you, the entrepreneur, the hardworking individual, with all of the resources that are necessary to execute that big, 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 big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And on this episode, we have the one and only LaWanda, who's in the building. What's up, LaWanda Tillette? How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you, Shay, for having me. How are you? Good, good. I'm so thankful also to Maxine Johnson, who, who connected us, uh, an amazing individual. She's an amazing collaborator. And I know she's a super duper um, person who's helping folks in human resources. Shout out to her as well. Absolutely. My fast friend. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. So we're going to be talking about customer service. And yes. I'm curious, with all the technology going on today, with AI going on, with folks being able to go online, uh, with folks being able to communicate over the phone or even face to face, what's the biggest challenge that companies are struggling with as it relates to customer service? And I'd like for you to put it in two buckets if you can. I think you can handle it. Bucket one is corporate because I know you deal with corporate clients. Okay. Absolutely. And then the other side, those are everyday entrepreneurs. They might have less than 20 employees. What's their, what is their biggest challenge today? So the biggest challenge, both buckets are similar how they approach it are different, but both buckets I find are struggling with connectivity. Customer service is still about humans. We have AI, we have all of these different modalities that people can use their tools and their resources. They are just that they're tools. They're not meant to take the place of human interaction and human connection. A lot of times people are frustrated with that lack of human connection when they have questions and concerns. And so that part of the customer service is being lost. They find that they're being efficient, but in their in the corporate setting. In the process of being efficient with systems and tools, you're losing the human touch. So people no longer feel connected to your brand. They feel like they're just another number. In a small business setting or you know personal businesses, um, I won't even call mom and pops because it's a small business and you still are, you still have, have need and value. Even in that setting, what I find their customer service issue is they feel that, oh, well, we're here and that it's kind of the customer isn't always right. And I feel customer service is a, is a partnership, partnership between the customer and the vendor. And in order for everybody to have a great customer service experience, the customer has to come prepared to serve, prepare to receive, prepare to pay, prepare to have a good experience, and the vendor has to make sure they're preparing them an experience, an atmosphere, and that it's a mutual exchange. If I'm purchasing something from you, I should be able to have it with a warm attitude and I should get what I'm asking for and you should be get your money in return. And that's how I feel customer, where people are missing the mark when it comes to customer service. Now, thanks for sharing. I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. Um, I know since uh, we're in the post-COVID days, I guess, depending mm -hmm. on when you're watching and get a hold of this. And if you're watching live, then you know where we are right now. And I'm just curious, this is Shay Brown, but, you know, what do you say to the clients that, you know, just use this to automate a system? So, so what frustrates me the most, and I'm not going to name any names, but when I call and a dig, hit one, dig, hit two, dig, hit three, hit Zero four operate. No, go back. No, say your name again. No, please verify with your voice. No, no, put your fingerprint in. And it seems like it's taken me like, and, and again, I know I'm, I might've been born a long time ago, but it seems like to me it's taken hours. And I know it's probably a half an hour, but hours to get someone on the phone. Okay. Um, I, I'm just curious what your take on that is. Cause this is, it's just totally frustrating me. If I'm the only one out there, then I'm sorry. I'm the only one asking that question. You are not. You're absolutely not the only one. And I hear that all the time because what we forget is that, yes, we want things to be more efficient. Yes, we want people to be able to have easy access to things. We want people to be able to access our products and services. If we happen to be on vacation in Jamaica somewhere, we absolutely want that. But we want to make it convenient and fun and easy for our clients as well. And I just think that that's the biggest part. It is frustrating to dial one and then you got to hit another prompt and another prompt as opposed to just saying, hey, when you get to this point, I, I ask for customer service and I'm asking, I'm asking, I'm asking, I'm hitting zero, 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 zero. And it's 
And then at that point, they just disconnect the call. I feel like people are losing, major corporations are losing the, their consistent customer because they failed to incorporate human connectivity. And it's not that we are not trying to go into this new age of using tools and resources. It's just that you have to, you have to do that. It's a resource. It's in conjunction with, it's okay, hey, instead of me having to wait for 30 minutes, maybe I can do something with the chat feature that I can get resolved really quick. But if I can't, I want to be able to easily connect to someone else. So it's not just you. It's not just me. If you go and look online right now to customer reviews, if you look on reviews for Verizon particularly, if you look on different major corporations and people's reviews for customer service and asking, you notice they don't even ask you anymore about a survey. Tell us what you think. Give us a 10 if you think we did. They don't even ask you that anymore because they know that they no longer see that as an important feature. They no longer think that that's relevant. And what's sad about that is a lot of our storefront markets are closing because people feel like everybody wants to shop online, but people still want human touch. They still want human connectivity. And it's easier for me to drive to you and say, hey, Shay, you know what I ordered from you? I really had a hard time. Can you help me? That provides opportunity, number one, for you to connect to me as a customer. We build a relationship and then I'll be back. I'm going to tell other people about you. I'm coming back to shop with you. I'm coming back to purchase. I'm coming back to learn from you. Whatever it is you're offering, I'm coming back because you took the time to make me made me feel more of a customer and not a number. And that's why I feel, like I said, that's my take on the AI, the chat. It's supposed to be a resource and not to take the place of, and I think we're misusing um, what should be a very helpful tool. I think we're misusing it. And we'll see the results of that here in the next couple of years, I'm certain. So what would you say to Shay Brown that has to do the chat feature, let's say, on its phone? I mean, any, any advice you have for us, like just as the end user, forget the company, maybe they're not going to do anything. I'm all for free commerce. So please understand that I'm an entrepreneur. So I'm all for being able to do business here. And if Shay Brown's in Washington, D.C., he can do business with the person over in South Africa, or the person in London. I'm all for that. But I'm curious, like, what would you recommend to Shay Brown when I do have a problem and I've got to deal with that? that chat feature. And I don't know if it's an AI bot or what, but I ask it stuff and it seems to be asking the same thing over and over and over. Any, is there any vice, any, any secret sauce we know? Like should I press number nine, nine XX and I, I get someone, I mean, I'm just curious. I'm, I'm just curious. I would, love, I would love to tell you that I found a secret sauce for how to get around the chat box feature. Cause <laughs> no, I have not. Um, you can press zero all you like and all it does is in the call and then you continue to do the chat box and it just gets, it's like, it's like, Hey, I, I, then you get, I don't understand. And I'm like, well, then, and then I have found myself, I did one time say, I request a human. I did one time say, I request a human. Um, and what happened? And, and then it was, then you got, hi, I'm Zach, or whoever it was at the time. And oh. we started you know, connecting that way because it does get frustrating. Um, I don't know that all companies have gone to that and are able to do that. But I would, when, as soon as I find a life hack, <laughs> as they say, the chat box hack, I will definitely do so. But I do encourage people to still use the phone, still use the phone. And if you can go in person, um, if you're in South Africa and we're here in America, obviously that can't happen. But I encourage as much as you can, you can write in. Emails are always good. Um, be able to use that and you can express your concerns via email. Now, will somebody get to it? It may go to a bulk email, but I would just encourage doing that, emailing the company. Um, finding ways to connect with them on social media, expressing your concerns. People don't like negative reviews, so you could always go and do a review. Um, and people think that that's being rude, but it's really not. People who are paying attention to the numbers and their their demographics and watching the data, they will pay attention to those reviews because they don't want that out there. You'd be surprised how quick people respond to um, negative reviews if they care okay. about the business. Let me put that part. In right, there. and it might not be a negative review. It's my experience. Right. Like yep. my experience is I've called and I couldn't get anyone. Right. I mean, that that's an yep. experience. And I know you're all about the curated experience, which we'll yep. talk about in a moment. I was hoping there was some some secret backdoor hack like Shay, go to their business page, no. send them a Twitter message. They respond a lot faster in Twitter. But no, no, it was none of that. It was none of that. It's well, Shay, no, I'm you got to deal with it. I'm sorry, but do you social do, social media can be your advocate because a lot of times, again, like I said, people don't want others that have a negative experience of what they're willing to do is like you said, do you social media, use Instagram, use Facebook, find all of those ways to message them and DM them because there are people who are paying attention to that. That's not a chat or like a AI or what have you. 
Mm-hmm. There, they have your bio below. Some folks have already Googled you, they've searched you, finding your podcast. Um, and others just want to hear from you. Who is Lawanda Taylor Shay? Tell us what is her backstory and what led her, what was the defining moment that led her to doing what she's doing now? We, we like to know. So give us the backstory. Who are you? Um, who I am? I'm just a, I'm a cute little Southern girl from Eden to North Carolina. And I went to school for journalism. I had a dream to do that. I didn't finish my degree. Um, and, you know, I just love all, I've always loved all things decorating and fancy and events and all those things and find myself serving. And over the years, I've appreciated and understood that my gift and calling is to serve and that hospitality is a gift. So I embraced that when I started doing event planning with Little Black Dress. That was my first business. It was in 2014. And then I hit a shift. Um, I want to say back in 2021, I hit a shift where it was like things had slowed up a little bit. I wasn't as focused and I wasn't as driven, but it it, it wasn't feeling as good to me anymore. Um, but I knew I still wanted to serve. I wanted to still be able to make people happy and I still wanted to minister through that capacity. And so I remember vividly, I was talking to a friend of mine, Lynette Monte, and she was like, who told you? Who told you you had to go back to school? Who told you you had to have a degree to do that? And then Kimberly Arrington, she was like, Luanda, jump. She said, LT, you're overthinking it. You're just really overthinking this thing. She said, you just need to jump. So um, December 21st of 2021, I jumped in and I started the podcast. I would love to say that I, you know, that, that was like the first moment. But my, my sweetie and I, he and I had a conversation. He was like, had you ever thought that you should do the show first? And then that would help drive the business. And I was like, you know, he said, you're really good at it. And I was just kept pausing and pausing. So I jumped in and what I thought would just be a few shows turned into more shows. And I'm so excited to say we fit, just finished up season three and we're headed into year two in December. So that's my backstory. As to Congratulations. How I got here. Just feeling like feeling like that door for me in journalism had closed, had felt like that door for me as far as events maybe pivot because you know after COVID everything changed people were trying to do everything their own DIY but God gave me another opportunity with this to say hey what I want you to do is use those same gift same gifts and talents of art of relationships and vendors and that type of thing and serving and bring people to connect together connect them to people products and resources that encourage uplift and inspire and those three words have stayed with me you know in terms of like what our vision is and the core of who we are encourage uplift inspired whether it is the podcast whether it's the service that i provide with concierge service it's all to encourage uplift and inspire and so that's how we're here fantastic and how did you get into the hr field then because now you're over in the human resources field is it, is it through the customer service lens or are those two different lenses you have going on now so i've learned over the years nothing is ever wasted I started at Golden Corral when I was 16 years old. And I believe that that's the first form of customer service you could ever get into because you worked the line to take your drink order and I scooted down the line to take your food order. Then I went down the line and I started serving and those types of things. But I'm saying all that to say it was a process. I think every everything that I've done, whether it was serving in the restaurant industry, I started working in the medical field. Um, I became my office manager and from the office manager that put me in the HR realm. And then when I came to the company that I, I am at now, I started doing HR and decided that this was, I like the employee engagement. I like the part of serving people, helping people and allowing companies to really tap into making sure their employees feel seen and feel heard and feel, feel cared about and that they're relevant. That if they, if nobody else, especially in HR, because HR is customer service, it's just internal customer service. It's about employee engagement. If you have happy employees, you know the science, you know the data, everybody knows it. When you have happy employees, your productivity increases exponentially. And people right now want to feel valued. The whole thing about the pandemic is we had a lot of employees feeling like, hey, oh, you don't care about me. And so we had the great resignation, if you will. And so that made people really, companies, corporations, step up their game for benefits, step up their game for compensation, step up their game for saying, hey, we see you, we want to, we value you, and we don't want you to leave. So they started paying attention to the human part of people, the actual part that mattered the most. They started tapping in more. And so um, I feel like it was a natural evolution of things 
from Golden Corral to now. I've learned to serve people in small places. I've learned to serve people in the medical field where you have to have the most compassion, the most empathy. Um, even when you're calling about bills, even when you're trying to schedule them from testing, all of those different things, nothing that I've done in my life was wasted. I see it play out right now when I am sitting doing the shows and I'm talking to people, being able to connect, making people feel comfortable. That's all from customer service, being able to read people, whether they're on my show, whether I'm providing a service to them, when I'm doing my concierge service, it's still about connectivity. And I, I believe I learned the very beginnings of that at Golden Corral. They're not paying me for that, by the way. But um, <laughs> Golden Corral, you know, it was a very humble beginning. And when they say don't despise the day of small beginnings, you really shouldn't because you don't know where that's going to show up again. And so, no, I, I didn't circle the wagon. I'm not over here in a field that is not totally connected. Human resources is the connection of people. You serve people. You serve people, you serve people where they are. Hospitality is still relevant. Hospitality is still necessary. Hospitality is necessary from one employee to another. Inter you know, and in HR, employees are our internal customers. So I, I feel like I landed right at home. You are, and we're so glad to have you on the other side. You know, one of my favorite questions to ask, and it's important because this question allows the audience to benefit. Um, and you, the audience, you can lean in because I'm going to ask of all the mentors she's had on this journey of life. And I know you've had a number of different mentors, but, you know, pick one mentor and maybe one lesson mm. you learn from that mentor that you can pay it for to us. And you at home, you get to lean in. I know at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we had this conversation, whether you're here live with us right now or maybe you're watching on the podcast channel or maybe you're over at YouTube, but you can subscribe at, at I am J Brown or however you found us on the media platforms, you're here. So you get the benefits. So my question to LaWanda Tilly is the one and only, what's one lesson you learned from one of your mentors that you can share with us that'll make our life better? Ooh. I'm going to say the greatest lesson that I've learned from all of my mentors, um, and there have been many, there have truly been many, is Kimberly Arrington. And is she, and when she said LT jump. And I'm, I'm, I hate that I had to pick one or the other because I think her and Lynette Monte are two together. But Kimberly Arrington, when she said LT jump, all you have is all you need. And when you jump, you figure it out as you move. And so don't overanalyze it. Don't don't overthink it. Sure, you need to put in some time and research, you know, the basic things. But as far as like getting started, don't let that consume you to where you don't start and you don't begin. So that's one of the greatest lessons I've learned along this journey is to jump. And I know, you know, and I'm sure that came from Steve Harvey and whoever else. But that's the greatest thing that has stuck with me. And every time I connect with her, not sometimes, every time I connect with her, it's not long before whatever we've talked about comes to fruition every single time. Wow. What do you do for fun when you're not out saving the world? <laughs> I'm curious. I would love to think that I'm saving the world, but what I love well, you to do are. for you're fun. Making, you're making this world a better place because <laughs> you're improving customer service. You're improving our experiences. When we improve our experience, we spend more money. We're happier. We have more smiles. It's a, it's a big, tall order you have every day. So what do I like to do for fun? When I'm not saving the world, as you said, um, I'm spending time. I have two beautiful girls. They are grown now, so I try to spend time with them. Um, and I'm and I myself am experienced having curated experiences. I'm doing things a little different, getting out and about, putting my feet in the sand, putting my feet in the grass. Um, I love trying new things, doing new places. I love yoga. That's my new love. Um, I started it before and I kind of got away from it, so I'm getting back into that again. So that's Why, what, what I love. What, what kind of brought you back to yoga? What do you enjoy most about yoga? I what I love about yoga is I love that it's me. It's mm. everything concerning everything that happens in yoga is a is a Lawanda movement. It's not it's not dependent on anybody else's movement. It's not dependent on upon anybody else's timing. That's really Lawanda. You know, I get to I get to settle in with me. I get to become one with myself. I get to hear what God has to say because my mind's just racing all the time with the what ifs and why didn't they do this and why didn't that happen and why didn't that work and all those things. And so for me. I get to steal my mind in this place and really physically take care of myself. That's what's been important to me most, focusing on my physical well-being and some self-care for me. 
and cultivating those or creating those, curating those experiences for myself, as much as I talk about them for other people, I wanted to be a consumer of that. So that's what I do in my in my spare time. I love it. I love it. We have a segment here, Lawanda, called Today is my January 1st. And I know for those folks that are family, you tune in every night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and you wait for this moment, at least I do, where you can say those magical words, today is my January 1st. Happy New Year to you, by the way. And for those folks that are new, that are tuning in, this is your very first time. We want to welcome you to the family. Um, Today is my January 1st. It's one of our personal mantras here at the Happy Entrepreneur Show. Today is my January 1st represents a do-over. It represents a fresh start. It means that past, that past, that past. No matter what's in that past, it does not equal the future. And so my question, when you hear those words, Lawanda, today is my January 1st, what do you hear? And what was one of your January 1st moments? Wow. I love that. First of all, I love that. I really do love that segment. And so we're going to return this favor in Conche, um, having you on. But I do love um, the January 1st mantra. Because I do, I firm believe you don't have to wait till the new year to start over. So I do love that. Um, I'm going to say my January 1st moment probably was in March of this year. And I can't remember the specific date just because it's not in front of me. But my new year, my January 1 was in March of this year because I said goodbye to remnants. I was still holding on, trying to hold on to a little black dress event planning and concierge service. And um, I went to renew my LLC and it was long, it said not available, not even not available, just not eligible for renewal. And I was like, wow, God, you really do want me to let that go. You really want me to say goodbye to that. And I keep holding on to those two pieces and parts of it. And I was like, okay. And so Curated Experience actually took on its full life as an LLC in March of 2023. So, so for me, that was my January 1st of saying a new chapter, a new start. And from there, things have been smooth. And when I say smooth, not easy, just smooth. Things have been moving with an ease. So for me, it was pivotal because it just let me know what my obedience turned into, my obedience to jump, my obedience to keep going when I didn't even know when only two people were showing up on the podcast, when only three people were showing up. And, you know, you're just, you're just like, man, really, am I really supposed to keep doing this? He's like, yeah, you really are supposed to keep doing this. So that was my January 1st moment to really come into the realization of what obedience can do and how it showed up. So, Wow. Well, congratulations to you. It is hard, but you're there. You're making a difference. And today is your January 1st. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And I'll be looking for my invite, by the way, so we can keep going. Oh, absolutely. Ah, ah. Y'all heard that on the recording. It's on the recording, by the way. Um, but in all seriousness, um, take a moment and let the audience know what type of clients do you work with these days, if any. I'm not sure if your firm's taking on any clients. And number two, how can folks best connect with you over and beyond this conversation? So right now I am taking on concierge services. Um, I'm really keeping it small because I want people to one have that, that curated experience with me. Um, with with me and, and my organization, I want them to feel good about it. Um, right now, I'm just doing more personal assisting as far as like when it comes to your specialized events. One service that we started doing was we were working with students that are out of town here in the area. We're providing a concierge service to students who are not local to help them and their parents and being a, a conduit, if you will. Um, being able to be a surrogate parent, not for cooking and all those other things, but um, being able to take kids. We I, we had a young man, he needed to go to the emergency room. He went to emergency room, but I was able to take him for further care and we were able to go to the specialist and different things and he had to have some testing done, but it gave his mother some peace. Even though she was in Richmond, couldn't get here right away, it gave her peace because she herself was going through surgery and different things. So that's one service that I know um, I'm ready to build out because we're getting ready for college again. So I'm excited about that. Uh, also, again, couture events, if you will. So not major events, but events that are specific to your people, to your tribe, so they can have an intimate setting with you, being able to work with clients now who want to focus on employee engagement and customer satisfaction. So being able to help you maintain or re maintain or obtain 
new clients. So I'm looking to work with realtors. I'm looking to work with those who um, provide service, such as eye care, things of that nature, and you want continued and repeat customers. That's my ideal client that I'm looking forward to working with. And how you can connect with me, you can connect with me at Curated Experience by LT.com. We just launched the website this weekend. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, we'd love to hear from you. So if you have any feedback, you can reach me there. You can catch me on social media. You can reach me, message me at Curated Experience by LT on Instagram. And that's at Curated Experience by LT on Instagram. Same thing on Facebook, Curated Experience by LT. And um, me directly, Luanda Tillon on Facebook. Wow. Well, once again, thank you so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. Again, shout out to Maxine Johnson. You both are amazing. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Shay. And I will still honor my commitment to have you on the show. Absolutely. I'm waiting for you to say yes. <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. Whenever you call, whenever you ask, the answer is always yes. Count me in. With that being said, thanks so much to you, the viewers. Thank you for tuning in because without you, there is no show. We appreciate you sharing it. We appreciate you that have subscribed. Hit over to YouTube if you haven't done that already. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at, at I am Che Brown. Make sure you follow us there. And on the podcast, make sure you download the podcast. You get the early edition episodes. It's so cool. Or meet us on the on demand streaming platforms. You know, I wait every night to say these words. I mean, seriously, I mean, I think about it during the day. I was talking to my wife and I said, I can't wait to share this with the audience. And I love the shares because I think it's important. It's important to you, it's important to me, but I want you to know that you are really incredible, that you are truly amazing and that you've got so much potential inside of you. And for that reason, that today is your January 1st. And that one reason alone means your best is still yet to come. I want you to believe that. Your best is yet to come. No matter what, your best is still yet to come. With that being said, my name, in case you forgot, by any chance, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you from the bottom of my heart, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. Remember, time is long. Life is short. You got to live in that moment. And you got to make it count. God bless me with your success. Thanks a lot, Luanda. We appreciate you. We're out, everyone. Peace. Bye-bye.